Have you seen the big news about the new recommendation for the definition of type 2 diabetes remission? Well, a new paper published in Diabetologia is the consensus statement from the Endocrine Society, the European Association for the Study of Diabetes, Diabetes UK, and the American Diabetes Association. And it's a consensus report, definition and interpretation of remission in type 2 diabetes. Now, on the one hand, this seems like pretty big news because there's been a lot of discussion about what does it really mean to put type 2 diabetes in remission. But let's be careful about how we interpret this because I think this has more to do with uh, medical coding and billing and insurance uh, payments and, and uniformity for um, studies than it does really for the individual. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com. And as I said in the info, intro, this really needs to be um, thought about a little more critically. So first, let's just jump right to the definition. These, these um, organizations came to the consensus that type 2 diabetes remission having a hemoglobin A1C of 6.5 or lower for three months on no blood sugar lowering medications. So that's their definition of remission. Now, this is a bit of a change from the 2009 publication, which grouped it into three different categories, partial remission, complete remission, and long-term remission. They sort of got rid of all those and said, we're just sticking with one definition of remission. Now, here's what's so interesting. Yes, it's important to have consistency. If you are running clinical trials and you want your outcome to be remission of type 2 diabetes, now you have a de definition for what that is. If you are a doctor trying to code or bill for remission of type 2 diabetes, now you have a definition of what that is. But does that mean that should be your goal as a patient, as someone with type 2 diabetes? I'm not so sure. Let's look at a couple different scenarios first and foremost. And so it's 6.5 or lower for hemoglobin A1C. Well, that still can leave you in the range of prediabetes. Does that mean you're fine, you're in remission, don't worry about it? Absolutely not. If you have prediabetes, you are still at increased risk of cardiovascular events, metabolic disease, premature death. All of those things come along with prediabetes. So by no means should you be happy to be in the prediabetes range and think you're done. Certainly better than being in the diabetes range, but not not an end game. The other thing is you have to be off all diabetes medications to fit this definition of remission. So again, let's take two scenarios. What if you have a hemoglobin A1C of 5.4, but you need some metformin to keep you there, or you're at 6.0 without metformin? Which is the better scenario? I would argue the 5.4 with metformin is the better scenario because your blood sugar is normal. You're no longer in the prediabetes range. So if lifestyle is going to get you most of the way, but you need some metformin to keep you below that prediabetes range, personally, that's where I would rather be than still be in the prediabetes range without any medication, but be labeled as being in remission. So that's where I think this sort of breaks down a little bit, um, actually quite a bit, uh, when it comes to the individual. Now, to their credit, they, they recognize that lifestyle interventions can help put type 2 diabetes into remission. And they talk about weight loss surgery as well. But they, talk, they use the three months as the time frame. And, you know, things change. Things go up and down. So I'd be concerned about that three months. Prior definitions had, them, had it out to a year, that you had to have normal blood sugar for a year, which I think is a better definition. Because um, if you really want to say you've put this behind you, a year seems like a better uh, time frame than three months. But also interesting, they talked about the, the terms being used. So remission rather than reversal and rather than cure, because it certainly isn't cured, right? They make a very good point that you can lower the blood sugar, but that does not mean you've completely resolved the insulin resistance and hyperinsulinemia. Those conditions may still exist, which means you are at risk of the type 2 diabetes coming back. And the same for reversal. They, they said reversal seems to imply it's not coming back. We use reversal a lot in our website at dietdoctor.com, but we certainly don't mean that it's gone forever. We've sort of used reversal and remission interchangeably. Maybe we need to start just using remission now that that seems to be the way the consensus is going. But for us, it sort of has always meant the same thing, that if you are doing something with your lifestyle that has put your diabetes into remission, it still is at risk of coming back if you stop doing those things, right? If you are eating a standard American diet and not exercising and have type 2 diabetes, all of a sudden you start following a healthy low-carb diet, you start getting some exercise, building some muscle mass, improving your body composition, 
and your type 2 diabetes goes into remission, that doesn't mean you can go back to following the standard American diet sitting on the couch and your diabetes will remain in remission, right? That's, that, that doesn't happen. Um, that you have a high likelihood of it coming back. So, so I agree with that terminology. But as I've said, the main weakness is that they stop in that pre-diabetes range. I prefer the old nomenclature of partial remission if you're in pre-diabetes range and complete remission if you have normal glycemia, normal blood sugar. Now, the next point, though, is how do you measure it? They focused on hemoglobin A1C, and they also mentioned fasting blood sugar, but I would really caution about using fasting blood sugar. I think it's the least helpful of any of the markers and unfortunately still sort of hanging around, but it's a one-time measurement at one time during the day. It doesn't tell you anything about your postprandial. And I think what's more important is your average blood sugar during the day and the degree of glycemic variation. So fortunately, they did talk about CGMs, continuous glucose monitors, and the utility of them for, uh, for estimating your average blood sugar for the day and your estimated A1C. And we have a whole guide on continuous glucose monitors that I suggest you take a look at if you want to learn more about those. We'll link to that below. But I'm glad they mentioned the use of CGMs because I really think that is the future of blood sugar management. You learn so much more than just what an average is. And there are some weaknesses to a hemoglobin A1C, and we have a whole guide on that as well that we'll link to below um, so you can learn more about the pros and cons of a hemoglobin A1C test. But I think the future is clearly with CGMs, especially as the technology improves. Um, so I'm glad to see that. And now as a little small point, they brought up some, some data suggesting that if you have high blood sugar and moderate to severe retinopathy, diabetic rep retinopathy in your eyes, and you lower blood sugar rapidly, the retinopathy can actually get worse. So they brought that up and made quite a big point about that. But I actually want to point out that that is with medications, right? The data from that is with medications, mostly insulin. So medications that increase your insulin level and lower your blood sugar. Well, fortunately, lifestyle interventions, especially low-carb diets, lower your blood sugar and lower your insulin. So we don't know if that would have the same effect or not, but um, I, would, I would hypothesize it doesn't. But if you have moderate to severe retinopathy, obviously talk to your ophthalmologist and your, your eye doctor about any lifestyle changes. And we have a podcast with an excellent ophthalmologist who uses low-carb interventions to help her patients, so Dr. Anna Lorenzo. So I recommend you go back and look at that podcast as well. So overall, is it big news that there's this consensus about type 2 diabetes remission? Well, it is big news for clinical trials and for medical coding and billing. But for you as an individual, I'm not sure it makes much of a difference because I think your goal should still be to reduce your blood sugar to the normal level if you can get there and to try and limit your medications as much as possible. But if you still need some medications, whether it be metformin or a GLP-1 medication or even an SGLT-2, as long as you're not on a severe carbohydrate reduction, then, then that's probably okay if it's going to get you into that normal range rather than the pre-diabetes range. Obviously, we'd like to be off all medications and in that normal range, that's the goal. But that doesn't necessarily fit the, their definition of remission. So let's be careful about how we interpret it for you as an individual. All right, thanks a lot, everybody. Hope you found this helpful. If you did, please click the thumbs up and subscribe button down below. That way you'll get all of our updates here for Diet Doctor News on YouTube. And also just a quick mention that we have a new membership for clinicians, Diet Doctor Pro, where we actually have a whole workflow about how to help patients de-prescribe their medications, how to work with them to lower their medications safely when they start a low-carb diet. Because that's one of the things about low-carb diets. They're so effective at lowering blood sugar that you can actually run into trouble if you're also on medications that lower your blood sugar. So it has to be done in a, in a purposeful and, and intelligent way. And we have resources on our website to educate clinicians about how to do that. So please, Talk to your doctor about that if you are if you do have type 2 diabetes and are on medications and are considering a low carb diet. Make sure you talk to your doctor first. And if they're not too confident about it, please refer them to our site because we have all the information there that they need to help you succeed safely. All right, take care, everybody. Mm -hmm.